Hi, my name is Margaret Fuchs. I'm an adult congenital heart disease cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, I've been asked today to answer some questions that patients commonly ask about congenital heart disease um, in the hopes of, of sharing some information and, and uh, uh, helping folks find their way to the right place. Um, so I'll just kind of answer some questions as they come. Um, what, I think the first most important question is what is congenital heart disease um, and how does it uh, pertain to adults? So congenital heart disease is just um, a heart condition that someone is born with. Usually it has to do with something that's different about the structure of their heart, about a valve or, or a hole in the heart or the way that the heart is built. Um, and it can be different than usual. And a lot of those patients have uh, surgeries or, or, or interventions in childhood. Um, and then uh, also need to see an adult cardiologist after they grow up to that age. So that's congenital heart disease in a nutshell. But of course, there's a huge spectrum um, and different patients are different. What types of congenital heart disease can present in adulthood? So what if you were a normal kid and you didn't knew, know that you had congenital heart disease? Um, and those can be variable. So we oftentimes can find uh, holes in the heart, what we call a, an atrial septal defect. That's something that can present in adulthood. Um, sometimes there are valve problems that were maybe mild in childhood and not appreciated, and then they can become more important um, and present in adulthood. So there's a really big range of congenital heart disease that sometimes people don't know that they have um, and presents in adulthood. And usually in those situations, um, patients may feel palpitations or heart racing or find that they're short of breath with activity. Those are common things that um, sometimes patients notice even in the prime of their life, in their 20s or in their 30s. Um, and those are um, symptoms that are really important to pay attention to. A lot of times those things are, are benign or, or uh, things that are easily taken care of. But every once in a while that represents congenital heart disease. And so uh, I commonly see patients with those complaints. At what age should uh, a child with congenital heart disease begin to transition over to adult cardiology care? Um, and that's really a hard uh, time, I think, for a lot of our patients because um, you know you've a lot of patients have had congenital heart disease since they were born and know their pediatric cardiologists and and really love their pediatric cardiologists and. Uh, the pediatric offices are brightly colored and fun to visit and the, you know, the nurses. And so there's a lot of friendly faces. So that can be a really hard time um, when we move to pediatrics to adulthood to kind of get to know a new face like me or some of my colleagues. Um, in general, um, sometimes between uh, age 18 to 21 is when most patients make that transition over. Sometimes it depends on if they have other um, health conditions that sort of form fall more into the realm of pediatrics or adult cardiology that can cause a patient to follow longer with pediatrics or, or transition sooner to adult care. Um, if uh, it's a female patient and that patient becomes pregnant, typically that's the time that we would transition the patient over to adult care. Um, but typically somewhere in that late adolescent um, high school graduation uh, time is, is when I often see patients for the very first time. And that's a really special visit and I try to make some extra time uh, to spend with patients at that very first transition visit. Um, it's a time for the young adult to um, get to know their heart disease maybe on a more independent level. Um, they're gonna start perhaps coming without their parent. Um, and so we sit down with a heart diagram and we draw it out. What's your heart like? What are the terms? If you're in an emergency room somewhere and you have trouble, what are, the, what are the things you need to be able to tell someone else about so that they can take care of you the right way? Um, and, and it's also a really fun time because I, I love to meet uh, young people who um, are often really inspiring and have, have had already quite a life story um, and have a lot of future ahead of them. So I love those visits and, and um, typically around that age is when we begin to make that transition over. If someone has had congenital heart disease um, surgery as a child, do they still need to see an adult congenital cardiologist like me? The answer is yes, please come back and see us. Um, a lot of people have the impression that you are cured um, or, or fixed um, or corrected. Those are all terms that we see kind of floating around in the literature. Um, and it is our sincere hope um, that the surgeries that our patients have as children serve them really well. And sometimes there is a surgery that's done as a ch in childhood and we never need to do anything ever again. Um, but sometimes there are things that come up. Sometimes a valve surgery has been done 
and the valve that was put in is starting to get old. Um, sometimes there's a hole in the heart that we didn't know about that's still left. There's a lot of different things that can happen over the course of a patient's life with congenital heart disease. And even simple things that we think are fixed sometimes, sometimes can have long-term consequences. Uh, the development of pulmonary hypertension or heart rhythm disturbances can happen even if the patient has sort of, quote, fixed or, or closed holes or, or cured congenital heart disease. And so there really is no form of congenital heart disease um, where you're done, quote unquote, with a cardiologist. Um, a lot of patients only need to come every few years to see someone like me and otherwise are doing great. Um, some patients need to come more often, um, but I would encourage those who have, um, you know, maybe had some un uncertain diagnosis, they're not sure what it was in childhood. It's always great to come in and have a visit and just get checked up and make sure that we sort of know what's going on and what to look for in the future. If you have congenital heart disease, should your child be tested? Um, and where does genetic testing come into play with congenital heart disease? Um, I think that that depends to some degree on what kind of congenital heart disease in, is present. There are some conditions that run in families. We know that moms and dads who have congenital heart disease have a slightly higher risk of their child having congenital heart disease. It's not always the exact same type. It's not as if mom or dad has one specific thing that their children will have exactly the same thing. Sometimes just congenital heart disease in general can cluster in families. Sometimes it's very random though. So 1% of all babies born have congenital heart disease of some form. And most of those babies don't have a parent that had congenital heart disease. And so um, when we meet a, a mom or a dad or, or a soon to be mom or dad, um, and we talk about things like family planning. One of the things we talk about is, is your condition something that's a higher risk or lower risk for being passed on? Typically, if a mom is pregnant and either the mom or the dad has congenital heart disease, we'll do recommend an echo of the baby while the baby's still in, in mom's belly in about 20 weeks. Um, and that's to look for congenital heart disease at that time. And so those are all factors that we consider. There are some genetic tests that can test for specific things um, that, that make some patients at higher risk for congenital heart disease. But at this stage of the game, most congenital heart disease, we can't find a specific gene or a specific test. And so we rely on echoes and, and other sort of imaging tests to look for congenital heart disease in family members. If you have congenital heart disease, um, what types of symptoms uh, could come up that mean you need to go back and see your doctor again? Um, so I think most importantly, as we've talked about, if you have congenital heart disease or, or had it as a child um, and had a surgery as a child, you really um, should be in touch with us um, intermittently anyways, even if you're feeling awesome, because that's the best time to see us is when I can say you're doing great and come back later. Um, but there are some things that I definitely want to know about in my patients. So if you're having chest pain, uh, especially if you're having chest pain with activity, but even if you just have random chest pains here and there, that's important. Uh, if you're short of breath, uh, if you go out to exercise and it's harder than it used to be, um, if you're having palpitations, if your heart feels like it's racing or it's out of rhythm, um, if you're fainting or you feel like you're going to fall over, um, those are all important things. And some of those things can happen in the course of a regular person's life and sometimes they don't mean very much at all. But um, sometimes there are things that come up um, in patients with congenital heart disease and, and those can be symptoms that we need to know about. And oftentimes at that time we'll get an EKG or we'll get an echo or some other testing depending on what's going on to try to sort that out better. But the most important thing uh, is to keep in touch with us so that we know how to reach you and you know how to reach us if something comes up. And finally, um, a question about lifestyle, diet, exercise. Are there anything in particular that congenital heart disease patients should do differently than regular? Um, and I think most importantly, it's just taking care of yourself and keeping yourself healthy. Um, it's because patients have congenital heart disease, we don't want other things to develop later in life. So, so all adults as we get older have a risk for uh, coronary artery disease or, or heart attack type heart disease. Um, and that's something we work hard to present, prevent in our congenital heart disease population. Um, some of that is, is, is not preventable, um, but taking good care of yourself, keeping your weight uh, at an ideal level, being active, um, and watching your food choices and your cholesterol levels can all help present, prevent acquired uh, heart disease as opposed to the congenital variety. Um, and those are all really important things for our congenital heart disease population. It's also really important that our patients feel empowered to be active. Um, I think I meet a lot of patients who are worried about their health and worried about their heart and afraid if they 
exercise too much that they're going to stress the system or somehow damage their hearts. Um, that's rarely the case. Uh, most of the time, exercise is good for the body. It's also good for the mind. Um, and it also helps us know how you're doing um, because if you're active and you can't do maybe as quite as much as you used to do, that might mean we need to look into something further. So there's lots and lots of reasons that congenital heart disease patients should feel empowered to be active and enjoy life and enjoy the things that they enjoy doing and especially um, be involved in physical activity. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to answer some of the questions that come up for our patients. Um, I hope to meet some of you in clinic and, and would be delighted to do so. Um, and uh, everyone have a great day.